Hi everyone, it's Killshot from 99 Gaming. This is The Walking Dead Comics, issue number 29, read and explained, aka Comics with Killshot. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. Uh, unbelievable series, but I do have to warn you guys, the series has gotten very, very dark and um, nothing like the TV show. And just to give you a little bit of a prelude and talk about issue number 28, the governor is far more evil in the comics than I ever thought he was on the television show. So I am going to warn you a little bit, the last issue had some sexual abuse. Uh, the governor just sexually assaulted Michonne, and I guess, you know, from his threats, it's going to happen over and over and over again. So if that does happen, just want to give uh, a little bit of a parental warning as well. I will skip some of the real hardcore panels, but we will discuss it. Um, this is just a very, very dark and evil time. In addition, in issue number 28, the governor cut off Rick's hand. That was a little bit shocking to me. They've got Glenn locked up. So right now, it looks very, very tough for uh, for the three heroes here. So let's get this thing going. And uh, hopefully by the end of this issue, it'll start to take a little bit of a turn and we can find out what's going to happen or how they'll finally get out of this mess. So here we go. We're all the way up to where are we at? We are June 2006, moving right along. And we start out with Rick and uh, noticing that he does not have that right hand. So <sighs> looks like he's trying to move a little bit. <sighs> Makes it to his feet. Doing okay. Doing okay so far, Rick. Keep it going. Uh, and not so much. Uh, using one hand is pretty difficult, I'm assuming. Whomp. So he hits the deck, and we've got someone checking up on him. Oh, my God. Dr. Stevens. What is it, Alice? It's the patient. He's trying to walk. Where? Jeez. He should have been out cold for at least a couple more hours. See if we can't get him back into bed. I'm trying. Wham! Who are you? Ah! Dr. Stevens takes a left hand to the jaw. Kill you. Sedative. Get a sedative. Got it. Hurry before he hurts himself. Or hurts you. It's in. Okay, good. Fine. Go get a couple guys to help us get him back into bed. Rick is out. Huff. Huff. All right, something's going on here. And I'm, I'm treading very lightly because I don't know what is right around the corner with the governor. But this looks like the room where he was assaulting Michonne. Okay, we're actually back to Michonne. So she was still uh, somewhat naked. You can see uh, a lot of crying, a lot of abuse. So she's been beaten. She's been sexually abused, and the governor was actually dressing himself again. Okay, okay, I'll admit it. I got a little carried away, but I don't regret a thing. I enjoyed every minute of it. What about you? No, I wouldn't think so. So not only has he abused her and beaten her, raped her, now he's gloating about it. So... Um, I know later on we'll have conversations between the governor and Negan, but on the television show, Negan was far more diabolical. But it's going to be hard to top what this guy is already doing in two issues. We're through here. Let me out. Clang, clang. Okay, we actually skipped again because after the governor was on his way out, uh, another scene of Michonne basically tied up. Uh, a lot of crying, and he basically is antagonizing her, saying, Go ahead and cry. You've got nothing to be ashamed of. And she says, I'm not crying for me. I'm crying for you. Guys, this picture is almost as hard for me to look at as some of the other pictures. I mean, even though it's only her face, you can see abused, beaten. You can see her lips. I mean, nose is bloodied, tears. Uh, I think about all the things I'm going to you, do to you, and it makes me cry. It scares me. So in her worst moment, she's saying to the governor, you don't worry about me. I'm not crying because you hurt me or abused me. I'm crying because I'm going to pay you back. That's cute. Rest as much as you can, at least. A guy's going to be in here later to clean you up, maybe give you some bandages, maybe even have a little fun himself, but mostly he'll be getting you ready for when I come back later tonight. So this is going to be ongoing. Just want to give you something to look forward to later. Leave your thoughts and comments. Um, it, this, is, this is tough, especially of how close we've grown with Michonne on the television show. Sun's coming up, isn't it? I need to get some sleep. So he has been there torching her all night. And here he goes.
walking down the street. Kids, please, I told you to stop running. Morning. Morning, Governor. So he's, you know, after all this, walking down the street as if nothing ever happened. That's very twisted. You kids slow down now. Listen to your mother. Okay. Nobody said, hey, dude, what happened to your ear? Bob, please, go get you some food. I hate to see you wasting away like this. We got rid of the barter system, so they'll just give you something. Fine, okay, if it'll get Mother Hen off my back. Thanks, Bob. I worry about you. Whatever. Going about his day. I know, I know. Sorry I was out so late or early depending on how you look at it. Who is he talking to? Okay, I do remember this from the TV show. This is his zombie daughter that he keeps chained up in his house. So she's trying to attack him. Wham! And he slaps her. Behave yourself! I'm sorry, honey. What's got you so upset? You haven't tried to attack me in months. Oh, no food, huh? And he's feeding her body parts. So I guess he feeds them what's left. And maybe the, the fighting and the zombies are a front in order to give her food. So maybe he's doing all this just for his daughter. You need to be more careful. If you knock over your bucket, it'll roll out of your reach. I raised you better than this. You don't want to do that, do you? Here. Pfft. See, you knocked your bucket over, and now your food is spoiled. That's what you get. Even fresh. I don't see how you can eat that stuff, really. I tried it. It's horrible. May taste different raw, but I'm not going to try it raw. So he's eating people? He's a cannibal as well, I guess? I'd get you some more food, honey, but Daddy's tired, so you'll just have to wait until I wake up. Knock, knock. Ugh. This better be good. Ugh. Stop it. What? Here's what you asked for. The two from the helicopter. Oh, and I put something else in there. Didn't know if you'd want to keep it. You can just get rid of it if you don't want it. Thanks. Make sure I get some sleep, okay? Don't let anyone else up here. Okay. No, this isn't for you. Well, I suppose you can have this. So he's giving her Rick's right hand. So he has something from the helicopter, and he just tosses Rick's hand over to his zombie daughter. Wow. Wow. Believable. You guys got guests. New neighbors, actually. Oh, he's got the heads of the people from the helicopter. You two can keep each other company. Gotta get off my feet. So, 57 channels and nothing on. Wow, this dude is super, super twisted. So all these people that he feeds, he keeps their heads in like aquariums. Is this ever going to end? We, we get the picture here, literally. Wow. Very, very twisted. You know what? You can say what you want about Negan beating someone down with Lucille. This dude is cutting people's heads off and looking at them as if they're a television show. All right. Let's move on to Glenn. I want to go home. 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 What? You ain't never moved before? You got a new home now. This is your home. <laughs> At least for a little while. Speaking of moving, you're getting a new room. Come with me. 
You deaf now too, you coward? Didn't you hear the good news? Get up. I said, get up. Fine. Have it your way. He give you any trouble? Ain't walking for himself, but he didn't put up a fight. I think he might have peed on himself. You know, that armor of his ain't got any police markings on it. Could be from a prison. Yeah, let's ask him that. Wake up, princess. I've got all kinds of interesting questions I want to ask you. But I'm not going to ask you even one of them just yet. I can see that what we did your friend Rick, was it? Has affected you a great deal. You seem like you could be in for the right mind for some questioning. But I really like to stack the deck in my favor. Are you listening? Pay attention. Crack. Why? Why are you doing all of this? The same reason anybody does anything. To get something I want. Now that I have your attention, I'm going to the cell next door. Just in case you don't recognize the screams. Michonne is in there. Listen carefully. But no matter what you hear, it isn't going to kill her. I can always come back later for that, though. That should get you in the mood to answer my questions. I'll be back in an hour or so. You'll know when I'm done. The screams will turn into whimpers. Close it. She ready? Probably not. Good. Open it up. So here we go again. This is going to be another assault, and they put Glenn right next door to try to break Glenn, and he's going to have to listen to all this abuse. So rough, rough stuff, everybody. And that is, that, that's, you know, that's heartbreaking. I don't know any other way to say it. And again. Ready for round two? I, you know, and I'm going to zoom in this. I just want you to see how dark, twisted, and evil that this guy actually is. And Glenn knows what's going on. All right, so I'm not going to read through this. You can see uh, he's taunting her, he's hitting her, he's abusing her, tells her not to pass out, and let's uh, let's roll through. We'll uh, kind of fast forward through the rest of the stuff here until you, you get the, the gist of the abuse, though. Just complete shock. Uh, and, and 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 sadness on Glenn. So Glenn's going to break. All right, everybody. We went through that assault scene, as I said before. It was a lot of back and forth. Not going to go through it. Um, even I think, you know, seeing the words on there, you can you can see it's just nothing but mass torture. So we've moved on. Here we are with Rick, and looks like Rick is sedated. So, no, no, I totally agree, and I also think, ah, you're awake. You the one patched me up? Best I could. Alice here helped a little. You've seen better days. Yeah. Am I okay? Is it infected? I got a fever. I can feel it. That's perfectly normal for someone who's experienced as much trauma as you. I'm monitoring you. Everything looks good so far. Are you going to attack me again? No. Don't think I will. You don't seem the murdering type. You're not really with him, are you? This madman running the place? The governor? Even got a real name? Philip is his real name. Alice, go get me some more bandages from the storeroom. Our patient has me worried of infection all of a sudden. Okay, Dr. Stevens. He was a good man. Emphasis on was. We started out as a small group soon after, all this start, soon after all this started. We found this town pretty early on. The National Guard Station, the narrow alleys, we decided we could defend this place. So we staked our claim. Started out, he was tough, but he got the job done. Philip emerged as the leader of our group very quickly. He did what had to be done, what needed to be done to keep people safe. After a while, it was clear to some of us that what he was doing was more out of his enjoyment than the need to protect us. It was clear he was little more than an evil bastard. I can't even talk about his poor daughter. 
Why do you allow it to go on? The fights, feeding the zombies. What do you think he'd do to anyone that opposed him? I hate him, but I can't do anything. Whatever he does, he keeps these people safe. That's enough for most of the people. As long as there's a wall between them and the biters, they're not too concerned with who's on this side of the wall. Well said, doctor, well said. What do you want? You said come in today. You wanted to change my bandage. Bruce, point a gun at Lefty over there. Sit down. I'll make it quick. I'm sure you have important things to do. You're looking well, stranger. Healing up nicely? Well, as nice as you can. So, when do you start torturing me? You? Never. I pegged you from the start. You're not going to say anything. You've got family back wherever you're going. You're not going to sell them out. No. I was going to torture the others in front of you. I didn't think you'd crack, but I was pretty sure that one of them would. But plans changed. To what? You're going into the arena today. I want to at least get some entertainment out of you. I'm currently planning on, wow, raping Michonne until she finds a way to kill herself. Yeah, this, this guy is just twisted. And the young Asian boy with the overreacting tear ducts? I let him go. You let him go? Why? Because he told us exactly what we wanted to hear. I know everything I need to know about your prison. And if he's stupid enough to go there, he'll lead us right to it. And that is it, everyone. So you can see, Glenn actually broke, told him exactly where the prison is. Rick, the look on his face, just complete shock. So now, Michonne tied up, Rick going into the, the pit to fight, and Glenn leading him back to the prison. So uh, very, very uh, twisted episode. Um, you know, I know it, it's got parts in it, and, you know, you get attached to these people. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I'm sure at some point it's going to turn back to a more positive vibe, but this is definitely part of the what made the comic, uh, I guess, as famous as, as it is, is these dire villains. So, once again, I'm a little speechless, but thank you so much. We'll try to turn this around. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Join us this afternoon for Sunday spoilers. At Give this video a thumbs up and look for more Walking Dead comics and more videos later on the day. My name is Killshot. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.